I said, I'm lost. He said, I know that. And I was waiting for you. Mm -hmm. I said, what? <laughs> he said, where are you going? I said, I'm going to Honduras. He said, well, I'm going two minutes away from where you're going. Mm -hmm. I picked him up and I took the man. Hi. Carry on. <laughs> <laughs> are you the chef? Oh, yes, you are. Good day, I am. Yes, you are. Hello, my brother. Hi. How are you? It's a pleasure meeting you. Oh, Heard so much about you. Uh, Have a seat. Thank you. Love this to. is a hot seat for you. Love to. You deserve the hot seat. I'm used to. I was just telling a story about Mexico. Okay. Do you know that I have been to Nepal? No, I have been to India, Pakistan. I have been to Burma. I have been to Japan. I've been to many places where you would assume people know about the cosmic reconnection. You got to go to Mexico. You would never associate Mexico with this type of understanding or level of understanding. I mean, pardon me. But guess what? That's where the magic is. They and they alone. They healed me. Mm -hmm. When I had gone to Russia, I was in England, I was in Africa, I went to Chinese medicine. Nobody healed me. I've gone to Mexico, and this Mexican healed me in 90 days. Mm -hmm. But when I begin to look at the Mexican integrity, I begin to see something very beautiful. Mm -hmm. Something that I never seen anywhere in the world. And I'm gonna give you a taste of it. There's a man selling herbs. But he's bad feet, like bad feet. But he's drizzling. This is in a place named Kwautla. Well, I'm looking at this man selling his herbs, but I don't know what these herbs are because I don't know. I don't know every herb in the world. There are trillions of them. I said, sir, he said that is Tila Trumpetia. Hmm. And what's that for? He said that is for crazy people like you. I said, but why am I crazy? He said, because your license plate says California. <laughs> and, and this is Quautla Morello. Where are you going? I said, I'm going to Honduras. He said, that's not the question. I'm asking you, where are you going in life? Because I'm a Mexican. And I don't even know Mexico City. And you left Mexico City yesterday. I said, yes, I did. He said, that's why I said, you're crazy. I said, well, he said, that's right. You got to obey nature. I said, yes, I have to. So he said, how, I asked him, how do you know that this herb is good for crazy people? He said, because it has a lot of oxygen. I said, but how do you not have a lot of oxygen? He said, I'll show you. He took a glass of water, he took a handful of the herbs, and he put it in the water, and in two seconds, blah, 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 oxygen. Wait. The herb is good for crazy people. Because it gives you oxygen to the brain. What herb is that? You see, that is... Ceniza de Monterrey, did, did Pablo find it? Last week? Last week. He found it. Because I've been talking about this herb for 15 years to Pablo, he just mm -hmm. found it. Mm -hmm. But this Mexican in Cuautla said, that Ceniza de Monterrey, meaning ashes of Monterrey, I speak Spanish. Mm -hmm. He said, ashes of Monterrey. I said, what's that for? 
He said that is for people that cannot walk because their foot has swollen, their liver is bad. Because mm -hmm. I asked him, how do you know that the liver is bad? He said, the feet swells. Mm -hmm. Oh, this is going to really crack your side. This is a journey I took in 1979, I'm going to take it again. The last herb now, that's when you're going to trick me again. I said, what herb is that? That Damiana. Oh, I said, that's for women. He said, yes. They call it Yeba del Benado, the, the herb of the day. I said, but I know that herb. He said, yeah. I said, may I have a kilo? He said, no. I said, why? Because of your license plate. <laughs> and what did my license plate have to do with this herb? He said, your license plate tell me you come from California. And the best Damiana come from California. Hmm. If I sell you this, I'm not being truthful. And the man is bare feet, he could have made money off of me. Hmm. But his level of integrity would not allow him to sell me that herb. This is what I always find in Mexico. Mexico, Mexico have a, sens a sensual, a sensation that when I go across the border, I feel it. Mm -hmm. You've been to Mexico? I've been to Mexico. Oh my God, it's beautiful. Would you say that there's a, the culture there, that they have a different value system? I can't hear you too well. Would you say that the culture in Mexico, that in general, they have a different value system? The Toltec? Yes. Let me tell you something. This is where the Peruvian got to me. Because the Peruvian came to me in, in Cusco. He said, Hey, black man, come here. <laughs> so I said, I wonder what I'm going to hear now from this dude. He said, Do you know what you represent? I said, Man, I may represent many things that I don't know about. He said, Well, you're a member of the organic family. The organic family. I said, what is that? You don't know? I said, no. Are you black and you don't know this? I said, yes, I don't know. He said, well, we didn't have any toilets because we didn't need it. Because all we ate was alkali food. Or even our fecal matter was clean. Like the elephant. You put it back in the soil, it's biodegrade. But when you have a toilet, you're going to pollute the planet. Mm -hmm. I said, oh my God, the organic family. Then, are you aware of Ubuntu? The, the, the blueprint for human prosperity, which started in Africa many thousands of years ago, mm -hmm. and this white man just found it, Ubuntu? Mm -hmm. He said, oh my God. The banking system came and destroyed Ubuntu. Mm -hmm. So when you talk about the Toltecs and the Olmecs, or are you talking about some ancient society that has the laws of life? It is from the Toltecs that I learned the usage of the Teosinte. The Teosinte is a plan that you're going to experience in Honduras mm -hmm. next week. Yeah. <laughs> it's a plan that they use to make tamales instead of corn. Mm -hmm. Corn is a hybrid. Corn is extremely dangerous. The Toltec use Teosinte. I love Mexico. Like the, like, like the pyramids of Mexico in Teotihuacan, mm -hmm. they are four times larger than the one in Egypt. Mm -hmm. But the Mexicans don't go around boasting that. Because they're very humble. Mm -hmm. They're very humble people. Mm -hmm. They are beautiful people. And we should really get closer to them. Me, because I speak Spanish, mm -hmm. oh, they just jump all over me. Mm -hmm. And I love them. I love them, I love them. I get more love in Mexico. Oh my God, these Mexican people. Her daddy, when he first came to see me, she brought him. She dragged a nigga by force, came to see me. <laughs> and he stopped making fun of me. Because Mexicans make fun of life. They don't live life in that serious place. No, everything is beautiful. Yeah, I love Mexico. I'm going back. I was speaking about the Spanish culture recently and their value system mm -hmm. and how you see their families always together. That's and right. You see them proud with their wives and their children and they are not consumers on the level that we are consumers and they don't value things, they value family. That's right. 
That's why I told brothers. I said, look, watch that Mexican. He got the baby. Mm -hmm. Right? He always have the baby in his arm. And then, if you take a Mexican and pay him $10 an hour, and you take a brother with the same family members, $10 an hour, that Mexican going to do more. Because truth. his wife is not going to stress him. Mm -hmm. She with him. They value that family unit. It's important. And it is important. It is important. But it, it shows love. It shows love. Let me tell you something. They wiped me out in February last year. When I went to my shop, there was nothing in there. Wow. My wife, my manager, my daughter, the manager's daughter, and everybody else wiped and took everything away. Wow. A business that I had now for 15 years. Pablo, the Mexican, said, what you gonna do? I said, well, I'm gonna take my tail and put it between my legs and I'm gonna roll over and play dead. <laughs> he said, you out of your mind? Call Jenny. That's a Mexican. Mm -hmm. Jenny came, what's wrong? I said, well, they took out everything. He, she called her mom and borrowed some money and thought with her computer. That very day, this one showed up. Your nanos, your nanos showed up. What happened? I said, I don't know. Your nano showed up with her boyfriend. Said, in a car. And I'm looking at this girl. I know she's like Ethiopian, mm -hmm. but she came to buy something. You, you came to buy, right? Mm -hmm. And it's clean. Guess what your nano said? I want to help you. Your dad would drive from San Bernardino to LA. Which is about an hour and a half for free working for me. Then came her. Wow. These two and Jenny and Pablo and we start the business all over again. Beautiful. Now the business is like, wow. Beautiful. How many people work there now? Is she number one, you see her number two, uh Jessica number three, Brenda number four. Who is number five? Beatrice. Huh? Beatrice. Beverly number five. Sonia. Sonia. Mario. Mario. Valeria and Kevin, right? And what about the other Jenny? Jennifer. Huh? Jennifer. Steve. Yeah. So how many of you are there now? Eleven? Or ten? Ten of us. Ten. Ten. Running. But these two started it. Mm -hmm. But when she came, when Jenny hired her, uh -huh. I said, I wonder why Jenny hired her. <laughs> She's so fragile. Looks so small. But when she opened her mouth and started talking, I tell her phone, I said, oh God, I better shut the fuck up. <laughs>